Who are you going to call? How about some kids? This is Ghostbusters Afterlife. A second look. I've seen this film before. Uh, but now I've actually seen it. This, this was in my period of blindness. This is just my second time watching it with audio description. Um, I bought this back during the pandemic off of iTunes. So I just have a digital copy of it. Um, so yeah, that's that's where you can get it. It's just naturally on iTunes. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I was a big fan of Ghostbusters. So like, oh, Ghostbusters, yeah, that feels like a film. I'll just blind purchase and, and just put it right in there. Uh, hope it works. And I, this, is only, this is only the second time I've seen it. This is a true second look. Um, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's got the cool sort of, um, way to tie into the original with Carrie Coon playing the daughter of Egon Spangler and, and, uh, inheriting this house and she takes her family out there because why not? Their life is falling apart anyway. And <laughs> so we get McKenna Grace and Finn Wolfhard and, and just head on out <laughs> to the to Oklahoma. Um, at least they have a house to live in, considering they were getting their rent pulled. They could actually live somewhere in a dilapidated house. It's like Casper, sort of. Um, and uh, Paul Rudd's here in the town, and some ghosts, and they're going to do some busting. And it turns out McKenna Grace is well-versed in science. She's very smart. Uh, we do see at the beginning there's this whole sequence with Egon that is uh, very oddly shot because Harold Ramis was already dead. And so they're using uh, the imagery. So there's just so much they can do with him running in the fields. I've heard it looks really good um, from the from those who could see from those, those, those sighted people out there in the world. Click subscribe, by the way, because I'm a blind film critic. And, uh, <laughs> surprise. Uh, yeah, so, um, it's all well described, uh, especially his sort of, like, final scene, and then we cut into the Ghostbusters, and we meet his, we meet the family, and we learn how they're tied in, and, uh, it does a, a really decent job of building, of world building this town that they live in now and, um, introducing us to who these kids are, who the mom is, who podcast is, who becomes the friend to McKenna Grace, who Lucky is that becomes the friend to Finn Wolfhard's character. It's funny that I know the names of the supporting characters offhand, but I can't tell you what the names of the two actors who I know the actors' names. Weird. Um... But I just realized that. I was like, I know the character names of the two people. I can't name the actors immediately offhand. But I know the actor names. I don't know their characters. Anyway. Um, and some ghost busting happens. And Paul Rudd is there to crack some jokes. Uh, and obviously, because they need a, a, a nice, strong, younger... I think we all just... Nobody really knows how old Paul Rudd is. He just... <laughs> It just ages at the rate of Paul Rudd. It's like his own thing. Like he just looks the same. Uh, he's actually a you know immortal vampire, and we just don't know it. But um, yeah, so I guess they needed somebody younger for this, even though he's not necessarily as young. I mean, he's been around for a while. He can't be. He can't be that young. Um, so yeah. This is this is fun. They tie it in. They call the original Ghostbusters and bring them back. Um, they chase some ghosts around. There's Muncher or whatever that's running through the town and destroying things. Kids get arrested because nobody believes in ghosts. So they just think the kids were destroying everything. And the mom's really upset. And they have the mini Stay, Push, pl stay Puffed Marshmallow Men here, uh, which, you know, is just fan service at this point. They're like, oh, look, it's cute little versions of the thing from before. This will be collectible. <laughs> uh, I don't think that quite hit the same way that, like, Groku did, though. Like, everybody was like, oh my god, Baby Yoda. But nobody was like, oh my god, Baby Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. <laughs> like, I just, I feel like that phenomenon didn't quite happen the way that they wanted to. And I understand 
from what I know about Frozen Empire, which I haven't seen yet, they br- they brought this those little thing. They're really trying to make that happen. And I just don't know that it's happened quite the same way that Groku has happened. Um, so, yeah. Fun fact. Um, this is fun. It's light. It moves quickly. Uh, it's not bad. I Now that I've seen all four of these sort of within close proximity to each other, back to back to back to back, uh, I do actually think Ghostbusters 2 is my least favorite. I wasn't sure because I watched Ghostbusters 2 before this one again. And I was like, I don't know. I need to rewatch Afterlife and see where, yeah, and we went, I rewatched Afterlife. And even though there's quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of fan service here. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting what they do with the franchise. Um, how they bring the, the old guys back sort of as this random cameo at the end of the film. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's, somebody tried here. Jason Reitman tried to do something with the film, which I appreciate. Um, and, uh, I didn't realize Gil Keenan wrote the script for this because he ended up directing Frozen Empire. I was like... Oh, Gil Keenan, no. <laughs> no. I don't have a high opinion of Gil Keenan, but now that I know that he wrote this one, I'm like, maybe Frozen Empire is not that bad. So now I'm a little bit more optimistic about Frozen Empire being maybe about the same as Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, I still like the Ghostbusters 2016 version. Sorry, guys, I'm in that minority. I'm in the the little tiny bubble. I thought that was fun. I thought it was inventive and creative. This is also inventive and creative, and I'll give it points for that. Um, and uh, I, I'll say that the audio description um, I thought was really pretty solid. It's British for some reason. If you get it off of iTunes, you get a lot of torches uh, instead of anything else. But um, yeah, so it's... Uh, it is what it is, and uh, it's out there for people to be serviced as fans. This film will service you. Uh, McKe- you know, McKenna Grace is, has been getting a lot of praise as being the, the future of the franchise. Cool. Um, I, I think there was some magic to how the four of them work together, and you don't quite get that from putting these four kids together. I mean, like, immediately... When you put the kids together, they don't even have the chemistry of Finn Wolfhard's other group of kids in Stranger Things. So, uh, I don't... I think that's overstretching McKenna Grace's powers to pull things together. But this is fine. I'm giving Ghostbusters Afterlife a B. Um, yeah. So, anyway. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I know you clicked that subscribe button. And I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the other side.